We are a, uh, a payment service provider um, founded back in 2006 by the team that founded a company called Bibit that was bought in early 2000 by RBS WorldPay and the Bibit platform is now the kind of foundation for the WorldPay corporate platform. So we've got a great heritage in payments um, and the guys when they left RBS set up Adyen to kind of create the next generation payment platform. So truly global business, we're in uh, offices in eight different countries we're about 150 employees now and kind of very proud of a number of uh, awards that we've won recently in terms of fastest startup in Europe and, uh, and payment specific as well. So just very briefly on the platform, it's designed to be a single kind of multi-channel approach to payment. So um, through a single integration into us, retailers can get access to um, payments from any sales channel, so e-commerce, mobile uh, or point of sale to kind of any payment type globally essentially so we've got over 250 alternative payment methods hooked in the other end we work very closely through our local offices to recommend what payment types to use where um, and also we kind of connect into over 85 different acquirers so we can work through our own acquiring platform um, or through local acquirers to really help get conversion up in certain territories for example Spain and France local acquiring can make a really big difference to conversion. Um, let's get that. So these are uh, kind of array of our customers at the moment. Um, Neil is, uh, is a great customer of ours, so we'll be bringing him back in a minute just to tell you a little bit of, uh, of what we're doing with them over up to the Christmas period. Um, but any questions on those, uh, come and see me at the end. So the other problem with going last is, as I was sat there looking, thinking about the kind of six tips I've got, um, they've either all gone or they're crap, so I'll let you decide <laughs> which, which one of those they are. So I think the, the first one, and kind of basically talked to the guys in the team and said, what, what do we hear from retailers in the lead up to Christmas? What kind of things are they checking and asking for? And the one that came back kind of, you know, from everyone pretty much was make sure you check capacity. So we've got a lot of our customers use our test platform to run really big load, load tests through. And they're not just testing, can we cope with the transactions? The testing, can the acquiring platform cope with the transactions? But also, can their own in-house systems cope with the load and pass the load through to the checkout? Um, the other piece as well is kind of, obviously, you've got really high lows going through the Christmas period. But also, people are running campaigns, so there's going to be peaks on peaks. So we would always recommend our merchants come and talk to us, tell us when they're running those campaigns, let us know the kind of levels that they're expecting from them, and then we can make sure that everything is in place so it will just be a kind of seamless checkout at that point as more customers get converted. Um, the other piece, and a kind of classic example of both of those things, is make sure your internal teams know when you're running campaigns. We, we had a customer recently that didn't tell us, so um, the acquirer that they, one of the local acquirers they were using in some far-flung destination uh, was doing some work on their platform, couldn't cope with the loads that were being passed through following the global campaign that they just run. But that was then magnified again because they answered their IT team who were actually doing a load of work in what they deemed was out of hours but was obviously in hours in another territory globally. Uh, and basically the whole thing just went to pot. So they had lots of people drove into the website, but conversion was horrible because they just couldn't pay for the goods that they were trying to get to. The other piece we see quite a lot at this time of year is um, abandoned carts or just stuff left in carts. So kind of one of the thoughts we've had was, you know, maybe you could put some incentive on the checkout page to make people go through that final piece and make the payment. So one of our customers, Naked Wines, this kind of runs all year, but one of the things they put on the on the checkout page is just a timeline. So three hours, 58 minutes is how long you've got before you can get free next day delivery. Maybe in the run-up to Christmas, you could have some kind of countdown to, you know, timeline to getting it in time for Christmas, or as Neil was saying, free next day delivery if you check out in 10 minutes, or maybe some vouchers if you check out within a certain time frame. Um, the other thing that's kind of outside of our remit but always captures me at this time and I think that's why I've got three chicken handbags is because you kind of go through a checkout, you park some stuff, you wonder about do you really need it, you go away and you forget all about it but that kind of retargeting at that point, constantly getting mails going do you know you've got this in that cart still, why don't you click here and go and buy it and I'm a massive sucker for that and regularly get converted. 
So this is me uh, going into the store on the 23rd of December, uh, buying my wife and the kids birthday presents in absolute horror that I'm never going to get out of there. Um, so one of the things, again, we've worked through our past capability with quite a few people is to introduce queue busting um, and just be able to get people out of long queues and redirect them to a uh, much swifter checkout. So a really good example of someone we work very closely with to do this is De Bonencorf um, in Amsterdam. Uh, sister company of Selfridges, very large department store, very kind of similar high-end goods. And the big thing for them is they, you know, they just can't have people going in really high basket value and then joining really long queues. So we've worked with them on a, on a couple of things. Um, on the left, they've kind of got these kits that they can now roll out at peak periods to just create more checkout wherever they get, um, wherever they need to. And on the right, they've um, they use our mobile point of sale device with a tablet to give shop assistance so that they can kind of go and break up queues whenever they see them and just take people off the floor and make, make payments straight away and really reduce the time to, uh, to get out of there with the goods. The other piece that we, we kind of started doing a lot of is, I guess, kind of seen it called the infinite aisle. And in my mind, it's kind of getting your e-commerce um, catalogue in store, something we're kind of working with Neil on. So couple of ways to do this we've, we've kind of worked with some people to get kiosks in store the key thing there is making the payment experience not like an e-commerce experience so you've not got this great kiosk and then you get your card out and whacking a load of numbers you know it's integrated into a chip and pin solution so you can pay there and then get out but the goods get delivered in line with whatever your e-commerce SLA is but also it just kind of expands the stock that's available in store and expands goods that might not be available in store at that point in time um, so what, what I was going to do here is we kind of work with uh, Five Run to deliver a solution with Neil at Moss um, to help kind of uh, get some of their catalogue, their e-commerce catalogue in store. So I just wanted to introduce Fabian to give us a little overview of Five Run and their solution, and then Neil will just wander back and tell us what he's looking to achieve with that pilot. Sure, thanks. So hi, I'm the um, co-founder and CEO of Five Run, and so some people call what we do omni-channel or multi-channel, right? I think what I call what we do is simply commerce. We bridge the online kind of shopping experience and those online products with the offline products that are inside the store. So if you're a shopper, you can buy what's on the shelf and you could buy what's online from a single shopping cart. It actually makes it nicer instead of having an associate tell you, that's from an online catalog, thank you, and they walk away. So on the far left side, we have a, a solution module that helps associates provide that as a solution benefit themselves. In other words, it turns, it turns them into superheroes. On the middle ground, it's a similar solution framework, but as a self-service uh, kiosk, if you will, that could be mounted behind a dressing room door or anywhere in the actual uh, retail location. And then what's coming in the first quarter of this year is the same ability, but imagine from the retailer's own app that you, as a consumer, you log in. Perhaps uh, when you walk in the store, you do a scratch off or you check into the store because you might have 20% off. And you could actually check yourself out directly and actually browse uh, all of the products, in other words, that online experience, but gearing them to use their own specific device they have inside their hand or in their pocket or purse. I think that's the uh, yeah, next slide. Okay, so, um, so so we've been working with uh, Adian and Fiverr on to put a solution into store. So we have a, um, a sort of manual process at the moment in our stores, which is a special order process. So uh, with a suit business, it's pretty impossible to get all your sizes and ranges into every store. So um, we actually have a manual process today where basically the store staff are able to sell what's in the DC so they can look on their EPOS system and see what's available. And they basically talk to the customer and the process is that they fill a piece of paper out and it's got about three or four copies of this piece of paper. It's very, very sort of old and labored process. And they either take a 50% deposit of the customer, they get the customer to either pay for it completely or they take nothing from the customer. Uh, this piece of paper wings its way to the DC and the DC then will send something out on one of the vans. It probably will take uh, a week to actually hit a store. And then the, the store will then remember that this, piece, this product has arrived, 
try and phone the customer, get the customer to come back in and hopefully complete the transaction. So there's a lot of hope and uh, manual paperwork involved in it. So what we've developed here is a iPad solution uh, which basically has the whole online catalogue available on it. Uh, so the customer can actually, with the sales assistant, because we are a very sales assistant type process in store, they can actually run through the stock that's available online if it isn't available in the store there. They can actually place their order online very simply and they can have the product delivered click and collect to the store or they can have it delivered next day or if in London um, with shuttle in, into the, um, it, within the next 90 minutes. And so we use the device there, the little shuttle device to take the payment. So we're actually using a chip and pin over the internet site so we get a secure payment, so fraud free payment, uh, person present rather than person not present and so they use their chip and pin on this device, it talks from Bluetooth into the iPad, it's completely PCI compliant, it uses the Adyen payment engine so it's a token system so we're not storing any credit card details. The customer hands the shuttle device back to the sales assistant and that product then wings its way automatically to the store or to the customer. So a very simple solution. Uh, we hope it's going to be very effective and it will be the sort of forerunner of potentially what we do going forward in terms of a kiosk or a direct uh, solution in stores for later if it's successful. So we're piloting this before Christmas in a number of stores.